Welcome back to From The Shed End Podcast with myself, Tida. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Now, before we get into the content, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below as well. But what a performance, man. What a performance. A very deflated performance from Chelsea at the weekend. Manchester United came into town. And as, as Theo predicted, if you, if you follow Theo on Twitter, he said it had 1-1 one, one written all over it. Another draw at Stamford Bridge against Manchester United. It was, I mean, it was, it was poor. Let's be honest. It was, it was a poor performance. I want to talk about the fans first of all, though, after the game, because I feel that, I feel with the fans, you know, they expect us to go into these games and smash teams 4-5-0, um, you know, Potter out, all of this stuff, still talking about Thomas Tuchel. Look, let's, let's be 110% honest. Graham Potter, in my opinion, has done a lot for the team so far in a short space of time. Still unbeaten. Yes, we've dropped points. We, we dropped points against Brentford. We dropped points against Manchester United. Two two games, arguably, when you look back on it, that we should have won easily. Both Brentford and Manchester United. You know, we had they were there for the taking, and we did we didn't do what we needed to do on the day. But all of this sort of Graham Potter, and you know, we want Roman back and Thomas Tuchel. It's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. So I think we need to get over that, and we need to just back Graham Potter. It's as simple as that. We're not going to beat teams four five nil. We haven't got the, the midfielders to, 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 to be creative enough to, to beat teams 4-5-0. We haven't got a striker that can score us 20-plus goals a season. It isn't going to happen. We've, we've arguably lost one of the best players in our team in Reese James for however many weeks now. It's, it, there's a lot to take in. So I, I get the frustration sometimes, but we have to be realistic as Chelsea fans. You know, we're playing in a team which is still transitioning. We've got a lot of players that came in during the summer, the Bamiangs and Sterlings and Kulabalis and Kukurea. You know, there's a lot to do. And we still have gaps in the midfield that if you've listened to our podcast, if you go back and watch some of our videos, we've spoken about on numerous times on this channel. And I it just sometimes it does annoy me when, you know, I think I, I, I was reading someone was blaming Kepa. Kepa. In my opinion, Kepa kept us in the game and kept it at 1-0 when it was 1-0 to us. And it could have been 2 or 3-0 to Manchester United at one point. You know, Rashford had a really good chance as well. You know, I thought Kepa was one of the best players on the pitch on Saturday, if I'm going to be 100, 110% honest. I thought he played really well. Another solid performance from him. Another solid performance from Trevor Chalabar, who again, I think, man of the match for me, albeit we didn't get the three points, but I thought he was another solid performance from Trevor Chalabar as I said a couple of weeks ago he's the sort of player that we need to start embedding into that defence and uh, it looks like Koulibaly might actually be injured again um, you know I think he picked up a knock um, over the weekend training he hasn't hasn't trained today ahead of the Champions League game so this is the perfect time for Trevor Chalabar to cement himself in this team He's still young. He hasn't put a foot wrong under under Graham Potter. He hardly done it under Thomas Tuchel. He's a solid centre back, and he put in another good performance. But I want to talk about the lineup because I'll be honest. I was a bit sort of. I mean, when we we did our preview, myself and Theo, um, we we had Ruben Loftus Cheek at right wing back. Now, Aspilicueta is a really good defender. Um, do I want to see him in a in a in a right wing back position? A hundred percent not. I just don't think it suits him. I don't think he's got the legs. Um, you know, we got to see that. I think it was Thiago Silva who pinged the ball. It was overhit slightly, but he's, he still doesn't have the legs to chase that ball down. Um, I, I thought he had a, a very decent game defensively, but I just think more so when he was in a back four as opposed to the, the three centre-backs and him playing as a right wing-back. It just didn't work. It didn't work, you know. And I think seeing Jorginho... With Ruben Loftus Cheek in midfield, Jorginho had a really poor game. A really poor game. Um, it's so easy for Manchester United to to walk the ball through midfield. They didn't really have to make much effort. It was so easy for them. I, I just I just don't understand with Jorginho. His his first touch, he can't win one v ones, aerial duels. He can't do anything at the moment. And you know to see him. All right, he got the penalty. He scored that, but. He, he just doesn't look like... Defensively, he was poor. It was too easy for, you know, for Casemiro. It was too easy for, for, for um, Ericsson and Fernandez in midfield. It was so easy for them. So, so easy. And I know a lot of people have credited Graham Potter for the switch before half-time. I think the 30th minute or just after the half-hour mark, bringing on Kovacic, taking off Kukurea, who, again, as a centre-back, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work as a centre-back to have Kukurea as... 
as a centre back, he just he just looks all over the place, you know. And I think yes, he can play as a centre back on the left side of a back three, but just because he can do that, it doesn't mean we have to do that. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all, you know. I would have, in my opinion, I w- if we were going to play back five, I would have had Ruben Loftus Cheek at right wing back. I would have utilised. Um, Aspiliqueta as a right centre back, Thiago Silva as your third centre back, uh, as your middle centre back, and then maybe put Trevor Chalabar on that left side at a push if Koulibaly isn't fit. But to see Kukurea again, you know, we got to see it in the Brentford game, it didn't work. We got to see it against Manchester United, it didn't work. You know, um, it just it just didn't look comfortable. You know, I think there was a moment where I think it was Rashford, um, you know, runs off the last defender. And I think, you know, Kepa has to come out. He has to deal with that. He has to close that gap down. Kukure is just sixes and sevens. He doesn't know where he is. Position, his positional awareness as a centre-back just didn't fill me with joy. And I think it's early days for him as, as a Chelsea player, but I think he's got to, you know, if, if, if Potter's expecting him to play in that role in, at times as well, he needs to adapt and be able to know a, a awareness of where he is on the pitch and who's who's around him he just doesn't really get that from what I've watched of him um, in the two games and to get hooked as well so early into the game you know again previously like he did in, in the Brentford game you, you know it's not good you know back to back performances for him at, right, at left centre back just didn't really fill me with joy um, going forward I mean if we talk about Sterling first of all another sub low performance from him I I, I mean it was so predictable, so, so predictable with, with Sterling and Aubameyang. And part of me wants to see that chemistry between the two of them and, and, and that link up play and the, con- the, the, you know, the continued um, consistency with the two of them. I want to see that, but you know, there needs to be an end product an end result. And at the moment we're not seeing that. Aubameyang as well, you know, Sterling, they were just both, Sterling takes too many touches. He, he, you know, he has to take three or four touches before he's even considered taking a shot. By the time he, he wants to take the shot, he's, you know, he's kicking the ball into a defender or he's, he's passing it back or he's passing it to the left again or he's cutting, trying to cut in. It just, it's so predictable. So, so predictable. And, you know, Aubameyang, okay, we can maybe argue that he didn't really get the service that he needed, but... He, he didn't do anything really in my opinion he did, I don't I don't think he he affected the game at all um you know another player that comes off as a sub as well um Mason Mount I thought had a, a, a relatively decent game I thought he he played well um you know continued with that inform um performance that he's been doing over the last couple of weeks but you know it's it's just this more of the same from us you know there was no real conviction in terms of us going forward um you know it was always sideways sideways backwards there's there's no real urgency to get forward with the ball and Credit Manchester United, they pressed us from the start. You know, they pressed us as soon as the game kicked off. They, you know, they were giving us zero space. We couldn't play out from the back as much as we wanted to. Very sloppy on the ball, making silly mistakes. And United uh, should have really capitalised on a lot of those opportunities that they did have. But it was just another poor performance um, from, from us, really. And, you know, the, the penalty, you know, United, I mean... I, I'm not sure how they didn't score in the first half and then obviously in the second half they, they did go on to score but the penalty I mean it was a penalty it was McTominay uh, silly silly penalty to give away Jorginho is always you know cold as ice ice in his veins done really well to, to score um, but at that moment now you know we're playing as a back four I think we've got the additional player in, in midfield with um, Kovacic uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek as well in the midfield but even then, we just didn't see the game out. We didn't see the game out. And and this is where we look back on these performances at the end of the season, you know, when we start talking about whether we make top four or not. These are the performances. It's these kind of games where you're 1-0 up. There's not long to go. See the game out. Just see the game out. It doesn't matter how we do it, whether it's scrappy. You've got to see the game out. You have to see the game out. You look at Newcastle yesterday, you know, they went and went to uh, Spurs, beat them 2-1, they saw the game out. They did, they slowed everything down. They see the game out. And we didn't do that. And the goal that we gave away was, I mean, again, people are blaming Kepa. I, I go online and I see people blaming Kepa for the goal. First of all, the ball comes in. I think it's Luke Shaw. You know, lost the ball into the box. And you could arguably say, I think it's Kovacic, maybe behind um, C- C- Casemiro. Chilwell, I think slightly ahead of him as well. No one really picks up Casemiro. 
really brilliant header. I mean, to, to, to get that much power and, and, and get it on target from where he was, brilliant header. But you have to look at the defence, again, the, the awareness, the positional awareness of the, the players, who was picking him up, who who should be marking him, who's close enough to get to him. You know, as I say, arguably, you could say Kovacic should be a lot closer to him. Maybe Ben Chilwell has to do a bit more um, as well. But credit to Kepo, because I think he actually attempts to save it, comes off the post and... It's just an unfortunate goal to give away, but at these moments are critical. You have to see the game out. It doesn't matter how you do it, whether you've got a time waste, whether you've got to just hold on to the ball, retain that ball, keep the possession. You've got to see the game out. As, as much as we played sloppy and we didn't do the basics, I mean, just see the game out. You get three points. You know, Newcastle have won, like I just said. They've, they've taken us out of the top four now. So it's these little fine margins of how we're playing. It's just, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. You know, we will say that Reese James is injured and Golo Kante is injured. Fair enough, but we still have enough on the pitch to do more. You know, we still have enough on the pitch to do more. Um, speaking of some of the subs, you know, I don't think any of them really impacted the game. You know, Pulisic came on, didn't really do much. Kovacic changed the game when he came on. I mean, we were getting murdered in midfield in that first half. So, you know, he came on and slightly changed things for us in midfield. But you look at, um, you know, Chukomeko came on, I think, as well. Broja, you know, none of them really changed the game for us. And I think had we got that set up initially, you know, Kovacic starts the game, we could have been talking about a totally different game. And this is where, for Graham Potter, he has to sometimes change things. You know, maybe utilise the fact that we have players out. So we have to utilise a back four rather than trying to cram in, you know, players like Aspilicueta at right wing back and Kukurea as a, as a left centre back. That doesn't clearly work. It didn't work in midweek against Brentford. It didn't work again on Saturday. And maybe go back to a back four sometimes. Maybe have that additional player in midfield because we got overran, we got overworked, we got bullied in midfield. And credit to him to see that there was an error, you know, 30 minutes into it. But if you'd started with Kovacic, you might be talking about a different result at the end of the day. You know, I just think it's a bit, it was it was a bit of a, it was just a mismatch, a poor performance. Basics were not being done. Um, but credit to United, you know, they, they played on, they got their point. But, you know, these are the games where come the end of the season, we're going to look at them. We're going to say, look at Brentford. We didn't beat them. Look at, United, we could have potentially beat them as well. So to drop these points now, you know, this crucial stage of the season, it is it is worrying. But I think we just need to step on now. We need to focus on, on Salzburg, um, look look ahead to that as well. And obviously the, the window will open again soon. So I think the, the key area, I mean, if anyone still thinks we don't need midfielders, we don't need someone creative in that midfield, I don't know what football you're watching, but we need someone creative in midfield who can who can change the game, who can and, and, and look at things tactically as well. I think we need to need to reassess how we we play sometimes because we just don't play like a team. We play as individuals and, and we need to stop doing that because we're playing as individuals. We're, we're making silly mistakes or we're passing back to our defenders and then we're passing back to Kepo. It's silly mistakes that's costing us every game now. So... I, I get the frustration from fans. I get that a hundred percent, but I do think you know we need to we need to seriously look at bringing in some reinforcements in midfield in in the January transfer window. How how hard is that going to be? Possibly depending on who we want to try and target. But another name that's been linked to us again, which I'm hoping is just rumours, is Cristiano Ronaldo, who has been linked with us again um, due to the fallout that he's having at Manchester United at the moment. Me personally, I'm going to stick to what I said before. I wouldn't really want him at the club, especially now that we have a Bamiyang as well. You don't really want two players that potentially are going to be on high wages at the club and. It just it just it sounds like it's going to be a messy a messy transfer saga for Ronaldo and hopefully as Chelsea fans and as a club we don't get involved in that but I can see the I can see the advantages of having someone like Ronaldo in your team but I just think he's a he's a loose cannon he's at that point in his career where you know he demands the respect before you know dishing out respect you know it's a two way street and I don't think Ronaldo would fit into how we want to play at the moment there's so many things that for me personally I, I would not want to see Ronaldo at Chelsea but these these rumours keep surf, surfacing every every opportunity uh, Todd Bowley's clearly a fan of him you know tried to bring him into the club when Thomas Tuchel was still still manager um, they've resurfaced again apparently he wants to give him a gateway out of out of Old Trafford and bring him to Stamford Bridge but I just don't think it would work with Ronaldo at Chelsea um 
does he guarantee you goals? Potentially not. Not from what I've seen of Ronaldo this season. Another player that is, you know, very much at the end of his career. You know, he's lost that yard of pace. Um, you know, he just doesn't. He's not. We're not talking about Ronaldo from you know ten, fifteen years ago. We're talking about Ronaldo at the end of his career. One last payday. Let let it not be us that that does that for him. I think you know um, had a really good career, but I just think the, the baggage, the drama that he comes with, as we see now, Old Trafford. We don't need that as we're trying to build our own squad. I don't think we need to add to that that mess and mayhem and chaos that that potentially will bring. But let me know your thoughts in the comments about Ronaldo. Would you like to see him at Chelsea? What would he bring to the team as well? What would he actually bring? Because it's easy to say he's going to bring goals, but you know we, we said that about Aubameyang. He should be able to score goals and look what's kind of happening with him. He's drying up the same with Sterling. So let me know your thoughts in the comments about Cristiano Ronaldo coming to Chelsea. Let me know your thoughts about the performance on Saturday against Manchester United. Am I being overcritical or do you actually agree with me that we should potentially have started with a back four? Maybe with Ruben Loftus-Cheek as a back five if it was a right wing back for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Don't forget to go to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and listen to all our podcasts. Episode 71, I think, is the latest, if my memory serves me right. So go back and listen to that that we recorded last week. And, of course, we'll have another match preview tomorrow for the, the Salzburg game. Press conference is today with Graham Potter at 6 p.m. So make sure you check that out on the Fifth Stand app as well. This has been T. Dot. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll be back with another video very soon. Stay safe, and thank you very much for watching.